Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about ball games in general. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a 2011 Vladash Vassal game called Mage Knight. And in this game, you'll be traversing the environment interacting with different locations, fighting enemies, building up your deck, getting spells into your deck, recruiting units, and eventually making your way to a city where you're gonna try and sack the city to win the game. And in this video, we'll be giving you, well, we must be nuts to do this, but we're giving you a brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like, and then we'll come back and we will tell you whether or not Mage Knight is still worth playing in 20. 19 so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to our channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this board games 4k mage knight how do you play this game well obviously we're not going to give you a comprehensive or even a brief overview of the rules. We're just going to give you a few sort of samples as to what you can do in this game, what sort of options this game gives you and what sort of choices this game gives you. Because it's too complex, it's too vast, it's too epic. So let's get started. Uh, you ready for this? So on your turn in this game, you'll be doing two things. You will be moving and then you will perform an action so in order to move what you do you look at the day night board and each type of terrain has got a different type of movement cost and in your deed deck this is your main hand of cards you'll have to look through your cards and then you'll have to select a number of cards with enough points that will allow you to move through that type of terrain so for example if you've got a move two card that will, do, that will give you two movement points and you'll if you play two of them you'll have four move, movement points which will allow you to get through either more of one type of terrain or a different more maybe dense type of terrain so also you can play cards sideways for one point of anything so if, if you wanted to play a card sideways to get one extra movement point to allow you to move through forests then you could do that if you wanted so another thing you can do if you look at the deed the cards in your deed deck you'll have a a top portion and a bottom portion and the top portion is just the standard action that you can do with that card and the bottom portion allows you to power it up with either mana from the source which is the dice that are rolled and put on the day night card or you've either got crystals which are like permanent types of mana that go in your play area or you've got just general mana which it gets discarded if you don't use it after a certain amount of time so you can power up the card to give you a more powerful option so also if you want to explore another tile that's off the board if you want to place a new exploration tile on the board that will always cost you two movement points regardless so once you've moved then you will be able to take an action and you can either fight enemies or you can interact with the space that you land on so first of all if you want to fight an enemy then you will need to be either on that space or adjacent to it depending on what type of enemy it is and if you look at some of the enemy cards you'll see that you've got the amount of attack that it does you've got the amount of defense that it does you've got any type of special defense or attack that it, it possesses and then you've got the amount of fame points that you get for defeating that enemy and the first stage of any combat is ranged or sieged attack and if you've got any cards in your hand that will allow you to do that you can play them before the enemy gets a chance to beat you up and then what you'll do you'll need to find enough block cards from your hand to match the enemy's attack and once that's done you will take you'll take wounds into your hand or your discard pile depending on how much how many block points you're missing and then what you'll do after the final part of the combat will allow you to attack the enemy and the way you do this is you'll have to find a certain amount of attack and you can also use ranged attack in this portion and what you'll do you'll play a number of cards from hand into your play area that equate to the opponent's strength and if you equal it or get more than that then you will take the fame from the opponent okay and there's various other rules that you depending on what enemy that you're encountering if you've uh, got a rampaging enemy if you move away from if you're adjacent to it and you move away from that enemy then you will provoke it and it will attack you mage towers and keeps offer different types of benefits like if you defeat a mage tower you get to take a spell from the spell offer and keeps give you various other options that you can take so fighting enemies is a good way to level up and when you level up in this game what you'll do you'll look at your fame track and then Every time you go onto a new line, you will you will get a reward. So it could be either a skill card, or you'll then be able to take 
you'll be able to level up one of your command counters which will allow you to recruit more units and you'll also be able to have more, more defense and you'll also be able to have more cards in your hand once you the more for the more command counters that you you have so what you'll do you'll keep doing this you'll keep interacting with these different things you can get you can let end, end your space on a village you can recruit units and you'll turn on a magical glade you can heal the wound cards from your discard pile from your hand depending on what you do you can go on adventures in mines you can you can encounter monster dens you can go on explorations in dungeons and you can, there's also ruins that you can explore and each one of these things each one of these locations gives you different things to do and different benefits so you'll keep doing this you'll cycle through your, your hand and then you'll declare end of round and then it, it's a scenario based game so each different scenario means the game lasts a certain number of days and nights and when you run out of cards from your deck you'll declare end of round once you've had a certain amount of rounds dependent on the scenario conditions the game will end and then there's a bit of final scoring depending on what scenario you have chosen to do so that's a very 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 brief overview of the rules of mage knight it's it's, it's nowhere near it's, this i mean this game is vast right so that's just a, a tiny tiny fraction of, of to give you a sort of a, an idea of how this game plays so um so what do we like about mage knight so the first thing that we really enjoy about this game is the absolute epic nature of this game i mean it's it's vast you've got the you've got three areas of the, the, the uh, command your attention you've got your hand of cards your deed deck that you've got to pay attention to you've got the map over this side you've got the exploration portion of the game with all the enemies and stuff on the on the terrain and then you've got the reputation and fame track with the all the offers all the spell offers and all the advanced action offers and all the unit offers that you've got to be looking at as well so you've got this sort of thing going on where you're, you're trying to sort of merge all of these different aspects of the game into one core strategy and we really really enjoy that portion of the game so the second thing that we really enjoy about major Knight is the way that it draws inspiration from lots of other genres so you've got the deck building element where you'll be you'll have your basic d deck with 16 cards but then you'll be taking advanced actions depending on what you what you do on the with your turns so you'll take this advanced actions you can get spells that you can put in there and you'll also be recruiting units from villages or, or keeps or whatever so you'll be able putting them into your play area or into your hand and you'll be trying to make your deck more efficient and more powerful so yeah we really like the way that it draws that you've got that exploration element that you you can you know you've got that sort of figure on the map that you'll be moving around and then you, you've also got this the strategy about which cards you're going to be playing a certain time right so yeah it's 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 massive so the, another thing that we really enjoy about this is the way the for its time anyway 2011 it's the novel wound system so if you get attacked by an enemy you get damaged you're going to be taking wound cards into your deck into your hand and it's the, the only thing they do they don't do anything you're not going to suffer from it but they just clog your deck up and it's very very difficult to them out of your deck without wasting time and a lot of the scenarios are sort of time based a sort of time based in nature so the more wound cards you get in your hand the more time you're going to be spending to try and get them out of your deck and it's at, at the time i mean this has been sort of copied over the years but at the time this was really new and a sort of very interesting mechanic in the game so another thing that we really enjoy about mage knight is the solo game is the the thing that makes it special is the way that the dummy player is implemented so what you've got, you, you take a, a, a character that you're not using, take their deed deck, you place a few crystals on their, on their card, and then you'll be cycling through three cards at a time. But if you draw a card that's the same colour as the crystal that's on the card, then you keep drawing again. So it's like a timer more than anything. It's not a real dummy player, but it acts as a timer. So you've got a... You've got to be wary about what the dummy player, how far the dummy player is going through the deck, because they can declare end of round when they get through the end of the deck, and that is really, really clever, and we really enjoy the the, the dummy player, and it doesn't really work a lot with a lot of games. You know, if you think about Alhambra and the dummy player there, don't really work. You think about Seven Wonders, it doesn't really work. But this dummy player solo aspect works really well. So another thing is the expansions really add to this game. I mean, not so much the third expansion, the second expansion, the Shades of Tesla, but the Lost Legion, for instance. It, it adds more stuff. It doesn't overcomplicate the game. I mean, the Shades of Tesla one did overcomplicate the game somewhat with the factions and all that sort of stuff. But you throw it all in and you've got more enemies, you've got more spell cards, you've got more advanced action cards. You've got more stuff. And that is, we, we always want more stuff. So what? don't we like about mage knight 
So the first thing that we find frustrating about Mage Knight is the fact that it's it's so complex. And if you put it away even for like a week or two, we tend to forget how to play it. And it's the fact it's got two rule books. Yeah, you've got one walkthrough that teaches you how to play the game, and then you've got a second rule book that teaches you how to play the full game. So you're constantly flicking backwards and forwards from these two rule books, trying to find the information you want. And we down we'd even downloaded a cheat sheet which is, becomes a rule book on its own. So it, it, it's mind-numbingly complicated. No, it's not really complicated. I mean, in essence, it's, it works. It's very, very simple. You just move in and take an action. But there's so many different nuances, so many fiddly little rules that you need to remember and what to do this and when to do that. And when you need to refresh the spell offers and where these cards go, whether they go into the unit offer. And oh, it drives me out of the wall. And it really does sort of put me off playing it as much as I like, like to play this game. So the second thing that we really find really annoying about Mage Knight is it's a massive, massive table hog and you need a huge table. I mean, we, t we pulled this out the other day and it took up the whole table and you, you're constantly reaching over yourself to sort of move things like if it asks you to refresh the spell off, you've got to reach right over and try. And so I'm not, I'm not joking when I say this, but it is probably best to play this game standing up because then you don't have to constantly sort of like reach over and, and give yourself a hernia. So another thing that we find really frustrating about this game is the multiplayer aspect is a, is a write off because it's too long. I mean, even if you're playing this with two players, it's it, it's not going to work because it just takes too long. So it's essentially just a solo game. Don't buy this for the multiplayer aspect of this game. So the final con we're going to talk about with this is something that we find unforgivable with games and it's the Shades of Tesla expansion where we picked it up. The the tokens and the cards were, they, they didn't match. The tokens were a lot smaller and the cards were smaller and they, the colours, you could tell instantly that they were from the expansion. And uh, we tried to get in contact with WizKids and they ignored us. But we did contact one of the sort of developers of the Shades of Tesla, Paul Grogan from uh, Game and Rules channel and he being a wonderful human being sent us all, sent us some extra cards that we we'd, we'd missed so once again thank you Mr Grogan you saved our lives with this game I, I recommend you go and see to check his channel out Game and Rules yeah where he does like uh, loads of uh, wonderful uh, tutorials and various other bits and pieces so yeah check that out yeah that's a, the, the fact that the components were sort of knowingly botched is unforgivable whiz kids so to summarise, is Mage Knight still worth playing in 2019? So we're going to say, yeah, absolutely. Mage Knight is still one of the biggest, most epic solo experiences you could possibly have on a tabletop. We're not saying it's easy. We're not saying that it takes a while to learn the game. You need to invest time and effort into learning this game you need a lot of patience you need to train yourself to remember a lot of fiddly rules and uh, you might have to take notes even you know but the rewards this game gives you when you do nail it down is immense it's one of the most rewarding solo games probably the most rewarding solo game you could possibly pick up and there's you can't buy the old core edition with the expansions anymore but you probably can you've got the Mage Knight Ultimate Edition that's just been printed and it throws everything that's been released into one box with one, well, two rule books. So we urge you to go out and buy Mage Knight, pick it up, sit down, do a PhD in Mage Knight Studies and uh, we're, we're going to give it five stars, no doubt about it. It's, it's still one of the best solo experiences that you could possibly want to play today and in the future. So like that's Mage Knight. That's a very, very brief and probably incomplete review of that game and it'd be impossible to do a review unless we banged on about it for three hours and you don't want that we don't want that so that's major night if you're new here then please consider subscribing to our channel for similar stuff and we'll see you next time